When someone says the word health, probably some images come into your head. Maybe you think of a very strong person with a lot of energy. Maybe you picture healthy food. Or maybe even a person running a marathon or participating in the Olympics. You might even picture a healthy environment with many green trees and clean, fresh air. All of these work as definitions of health. But if someone started talking about a country or a region being healthy, does that mean every single person in that area is healthy? Probably not, because the chances of every single person having good health at the same time is pretty low. But what does that mean? Can a nation be considered healthy even if some people in that area are sick? It turns out that defining a nation as healthy is about more than just how many individuals in that area have good health. Some nations have a high percentage of healthy people right now, but may not be living in a way that keeps that health sustainable. There's more to the picture than just the number of people who are currently healthy in a nation. In this video, we will discuss world health and how the health of a country is related to its sustainability. Sustainability is the ability of a country to meet its current needs without compromising the needs of its future generations. There are three parts to sustainability, social, economic, and environmental factors. There's a Native American principle that's pretty ancient that's called the seventh generation principle. It says that with every decision we make, we must consider our future seven generations forward. It's this type of thinking that will keep a nation's health sustainable. So how does a person get sick? All living things can get disease. Many diseases are caused by pathogens. A pathogen is anything that can cause disease. Some examples of pathogens that you may be familiar with are things like virus, bacteria, fungus, or parasites. These pathogens can get inside a living thing and start to cause trouble with their cells. These pathogens cause illness by releasing toxic chemicals, stopping the cell from doing its normal activities, taking up the cell's nutrients, or even eating the cell. All of these things start to cause a person's cells to die and makes the person feel sick. When a disease is caused by a pathogen, it is called an infectious disease, also known as a communicable disease. All infectious diseases are diseases that are caused by pathogens and can be passed from one person to another. Some examples are the flu and Ebola. These are different from what we call non-infectious diseases. Cancer and heart disease are examples of non-infectious diseases, also called non-communicable diseases. These diseases are called non-infectious because a sick person cannot pass the disease to a healthy person. Non-infectious diseases are often caused by a person's genetics or lifestyle. When looking at a country's health, it is interesting to look at the percentage of people that have infectious and non-infectious disease. In 1918 and 1919, influenza, also known as the flu, killed as many as 40 million people. Nowadays, we don't hear about the flu killing that many people. But in 2005, the World Health Organization estimated that more than 25 million people died of non-infectious diseases. Diseases affect human populations in many ways, including socially, economically, and environmentally. When people are sick or dying, those deaths will start to affect people on a social level, and the people might start to demand a cure to be found. You might see people trying to raise money or donating money to try to push hospitals and universities to study the disease and learn about it. In 2014, a phenomenon called the Ice Bucket Challenge was started to try to raise awareness for a disease called ALS, which affects a person's brain and spinal cord. The amount of money raised because of this challenge was over $100 million, all of which went to finding a cure and pushed research centers to start to pay attention to a disease that currently has no cure. Movements like this can start to affect the economy of a nation, as more money is put into healthcare because of people's awareness and the number of jobs in the healthcare field increases. It can also start to negatively, negatively affect the economy as costs of healthcare increase and people start to get sick and can't work. There is also a link between the environment and disease. Sometimes pollution in the environment can cause breathing difficulties and trigger asthma attacks in people that live in those areas. A researcher from Cornell University did a study that concluded 40% worldwide of deaths can be linked to either air, soil, or water pollution. Cholera, which is an infection of the intestines that can be spread by water polluted with the bacteria, affects hundreds of people a year. However, nations with good sanitation and access to clean drinking water have virtually no chance of getting diseases like cholera. 
The number of deaths from infectious and non-infectious diseases is very different when you look at different countries. If you were to compare a developed nation like the United States with an underdeveloped nation like Ethiopia, you would find that out of 100 deaths, 82 of those deaths in Ethiopia would be from infectious disease, while only 9 out of 100 in the U.S. would be from infectious disease. What would cause this trend? This is probably due to differences in the economics between the two countries and how their societies are set up. If you looked further at the data, you would see that the average life expectancy in Ethiopia is 60 years old, while in the U.S. it's closer to 80. This statistic tells you something about the health care of those two nations. U.S. has access to better health care, meaning more doctors and better developed medication. Also, better sanitation is available in the United States and access to clean dr drinking water. So in nations where access to health care is not as available, more people die of infectious diseases. Whereas in the United States, when more people live longer, more people die of non-infectious diseases. As the data is analyzed, it is not difficult to see the connection between the environment, social, and economic factors and a nation's health. With that knowledge, decisions can be made about where a country's health is leading and what types of issues are most important for that nation to address. Smaller, underdeveloped nations will have a very different focus than larger, more developed nations. But if they can concentrate on keeping the future generations in mind, they can keep the planet sustainable for years to come. Mm -hmm.